Hi, I'm Jessica Rabe, one of the co-founders of Data Trek Research. Today I'm going to discuss our preferred measure of how much investors feel real-time volatility, which is by tracking how many times the S&P 500 moves more than 1% up or down from one day to the next. There's a good statistical reason for focusing on 1% days. Any one day return greater than 1% to the upside or downside is an over one standard deviation move relative to the S&P's mean daily return since 1958 and is therefore significant. As a side note, we went back to 1958 because it's the index's first full year of data. Now, the key thing to know is that the more 1% days in any given quarter or year, the more U.S. equities tend to run into trouble. Elevated uncertainty causes this sort of choppiness, and the old saying that markets hate uncertainty is absolutely true. We bring this measure of volatility up today because it helps put some really useful context around why U.S. equities are struggling, given that the S&P has already had 15 1% days so far in Q1. That's above the quarterly average of 14, with still over two weeks left in the quarter. Moreover, the S&P averages 55 1% days a year, so we're already over a quarter, or 27% to be precise, of the way to the annual average with nine months to go in 2025. Now, the standard deviation around that annual mean is wide at 33, so it does take a geopolitical or economic shock to hit statistically significant levels of 1% days that reflect extreme market duress. For example, there were 122 1% days in 2022, given that, uh, given that year's rate shock, which was a two standard deviation event, and the S&P declined 18% on a total return basis as a result. On the flip side, as the number of 1% days declined over the next two years with 64 in 2023, and 50 in 2024 due to more clarity about the U.S. economy and path of interest rates, the SMB enjoyed total returns of 26 and 25 percent respectively. Volatility is inversely correlated with returns, so it works both ways for better or worse. More specifically, the S&P averages 14 1% days on a quarterly basis. The standard deviation around that mean is 10 days. As I said, the S&P has had 15 1% days in 2025 year to date. That's within normal bounds, but it is still above average and with plenty of days left in Q1 to hit the one standard deviation of 24 1% days. So the takeaway here is, given that volatility is inversely correlated with returns, the rise in 1% days from just 9 in Q4 2024 below average to 15 so far in Q1 above average helps explain why the S&P is down 4.8% year to date. As for what to look for in terms of 1% days signaling either a bear market or a bottom to start adding exposure, consider that the S&P has only had over 101% days in eight years since 1958. They were 1974 when there were 115 1% days because of the 1973 oil shock and follow on recession. 2000 to 2002, when there were 103, 107, and 126, respectively, due to the bursting of the dot-com bubble and lead-up to Gulf War II. And then 2008 and 2009, there were 134 and 118, respectively, uh, because of the financial crisis and Great Recession, of course. Uh, 2020, there were 110 1% days because of the pandemic crisis. And then lastly, in 2022, there were, uh, there were 120 2022 uh, 1% days because of heightened uncertainty about the impact of a rapid rise in rates on the U.S. economy and corporate earnings. 
The key takeaway here is that the quarterly average for 1% days during a special, especially volatile years has been 28 to 30, between one and two standard deviations above the long run mean. Six out of these eight years ended in the red, down an average total return of 21%. The common feature during down years was a string of quarters with above average 1% days, often by one or two sigmas. Keep in mind that there can be an, uh, an outlier quarter with above average 1% days, and U.S. equities can still rally through year end. For example, that just happened last year with 21% days in Q3, but only 9 in Q4. As for the only two years with outlier volatility, of over uh, 101% days, but a positive return, they were in 2009 and 2020. The S&P 500 was able to rally in both instances due to fiscal and monetary stimulus that addressed economic uncertainty, causing 1% days to fall throughout the year as U.S. equities recovered. Again, volatility's inverse relationship with U.S. equities works to both the upside and downside. So the upshot to this analysis is that history shows the uh, history shows a bottom in U.S. equities occurs when the number of one percent days starts to dissipate after a change in geopolitical conditions or fiscal and monetary policy that reduces investor un uncertainty. For now, we expect more 1% days as President Trump continues to negotiate tariffs and Fed funds futures don't expect the Fed to cut rates until June at the earliest. This is why we continue to recommend our VIX playbook, which says to find investable lows on a sliding scale when it hits 27.3 and then 35.1, which are one and two standard deviations above the long run average of 19.5. We hit the first level on Monday, but will become even more bullish if and when the VIX hits 35. That should represent peak market fear with lower VIX levels and a smaller uh, number of 1% days to follow with a rebound in the S&P. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy it. If you enjoyed it, and uh, please share it. You can also sign up for a two-week free trial on datatrekresearch.com to receive our daily investment newsletter. Thanks again for watching and we hope you have a great day.